So let's start our special on Pakistan today with the most damning allegation that has come forward from a sitting judge of the Islamabad High Court. One that has been suggested by many but hasn't by, been voiced by anyone, at least not so far. During an address to the Rawalpindi Bar Association, Justice Shokat Aziz Siddiqui has alleged that the ISI is involved in manipulating the country's judicial process and is in complete control of the judiciary. The justice added that the ISI has benches constituted to meet its demands and even has cases marked as per its wishes. Siddiqui went on to say that the judiciary was 50% responsible for the country's current situation. But he didn't stop there. In an allegation that has a direct impact on the upcoming elections, Siddiqui said that the ISI told the Islamabad High Court's Chief Justice to not let Nawaz Sharif and Maryam Nawaz out on bail before the elections. In fact, he claims that the Chief Justice was told to keep Siddiqui himself off the bench that hears Nawaz Sharif's application. And amidst all of this, the ISI has maintained a stoic silence and is yet to respond to the allegations levelled against it. ISI puri tara judicial proceedings ko manipulate karne mein involve hai. ISI ke log mukhtlif jaga pounch kar apni marzi ke bench banwate hain. Keso ki marking hoti hai. Main apni high court ki baat karta hoon. As ISI walo ne mere chief justice ko approach karke kaha ke hum ne election tak Nawaz Shreep aur uski beti ko bair nahi aane dena Shokat Aziz Siddiqui ko bench mein mat shamil kare. All right, to talk more about this story and a lot more on the broadcast, I'm joined by our bureau chief in Pakistan, Anas Malik, also with us on the show from London. Uh, to talk about the story is journalist and author Reham Khan. Good evening, both of you. Thank you for taking out the time to speak with us. Anas, I'm going to come to you first. It's been more than four hours since the story first broke. What has the reaction so far been on the ground over Justice Siddiqui's allegations? Well, absolutely, Aisha. What Justice Siddiqui said is indeed a shocker of a revelation. Uh, but it's not the first time. Uh, it's, it is indeed the first time that somebody has went on record. We've been hearing, uh, and we've, there has been chatter among the journalistic circle and among the uh, among the uh, uh, media and judiciary fraternity that uh, there has been a clampdown. In fact, uh, the deep state of Pakistan has been in total control of these institutions. But this is for the first time that uh, that an official, in fact, uh, somebody as senior and as important as Justice Shokat Aziz. Jagadji Siddiqui has went on record in public to name and shame the ISL officials. Now it's been above about roughly six hours around 11 a.m. This this event took place. R l l roughly it's about 7:30 local time. So it's, it's been above six hours and we're yet to see an official reaction from uh, coming in from the Inter Services Public Relations, the uh, the, the military's uh, PR wing that is responsible uh, to basically disseminate information for on regards to military. But what has to be kept in mind that military, the the, the military or the ISI, they have been trying to distance themselves but these alleg allegations that are coming in from somebody as senior and as responsible as Justice Shokat Siddiqui are indeed very serious they are they are yet to be investigated we've spoken to some of the bar association members the right. Pakistan bar association vice president Karan Murtaza he said that they would demand an inquiry commission uh, and uh, an open inquiry commission into these allegations but we're yet to see any uh, any substantial action that is to be taken in light of these allegations yes Aisha okay Anna stay with me let me take that across to Ray Reham as well, who's joining us from London. Um, Reham, what do you make of Mr. Siddiqui's allegations? They're very serious in nature. Again, one of the most powerful institutions of the country. Should he be preparing for a backlash? Thank you. Um, absolutely. I think it's very daring and he must be commended for his courage because uh, in in these desperate times, I think uh, silence would be uh, certainly regarded as betrayal. Uh, and I think he will go down in history as someone who took a stand. He has just confirmed what everyone knows. And, and I think that what the sad thing about this is the fact that 
the parts of his speech when he mentions the ISI were not aired by any channel on Pakistani uh, television networks. And these are just clips that we're hearing on social media. So this means that, of course, as I have repeatedly said, that this is fascism of the extreme kind. And for 2018, this is worse than any martial law that we've seen uh, in, 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 our, in our history, where uh, such voices and certainly judges and senior judges and their voices are squashed. And I think that it's, it's certainly a very severe indictment by a senior judge. And uh, he was expected to, and I think a few other judges will also now come forward and speak. And I think it's high time. He's just reaffirming and reconfirming what everyone has believed so far, but it needed someone of courage to come forward and uh, put this on record. Um, he will, of course, I think, as I said, it's a very daring thing for him to say. And they, I mean, a backlash is probably the wrong word. I think there could be some serious uh, threatening situations that he might face. Okay. And I think people need to come forward, democratic forces. And I mean, by democratic forces, I think that we need people, the people who are voting. The masses need to come and support this because uh, this is uh, perhaps revolutionary. Also, what is disturbing and uh, sad for me personally to view is that the, the three pillars of our society or um, uh, of the constitution are being uh, defamed, maligned by themselves. So, of course, the executive has been maligned because of charges of corruption. But the military and the ISI have been maligned. And that's uh, seriously uh, disturbing for any patriotic uh, individual and also, of course, for people who serve in the military establishment. And, of course, the judiciary. Uh, a pillar of society and a pillar of, 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 of the nation and the country has been maligned horribly. And, and the fourth wannabe a pillar, the media, has uh, displayed their lack of um, fairness and justice right. and their corporate right. interests. Okay. In fact, uh, I just want to take uh, forward what you said at the start of your answer. I've been trying to track this story online as well. And there are very few publications that have picked up this particular aspect of his statement, the one about the ISI. There's uh, practically no news uh, organization that has chosen to publish that portion. They've, in fact, uh, decided to use headlines about how the judiciary is 50% responsible for the current situation in the country. I'll take that to Anas in a second. But Anas, before that... His statement on the Sharifs and the bail plea, um, I would have thought that the PMLN would have picked up on that by now and at least made a statement. Uh, are you surprised no one has so far or am I missing part of the story here? Well, uh, absolutely, you're, you're not missing part of the story. The PMLN has been missing on this statement, on this side of the statement that he said that he was deliberately made to put off that bench after the uh, Chief Justice of the Islamabad High Court was influenced by the I ISO officials so that Nawaz Sharif and Maryam Nawaz could not have been granted bail. But what we've been seeing in the PMLN is that uh, the current leadership of the PMLN has been on a totally different uh, set of operation compared to that of uh, uh, a set of operations compared to that of Nawaz Sharif. Uh, Nawaz Sharif was, a, was on a relatively aggressive approach towards the establishment. He said that, and he he had up here, he had just one thing in mind that the supremacy of the vote should be should be respected. Whereas right now the current the current scenario in the current situation of PMLN that is led by Nawaz Sharif's brother Shabash Sharif, he he seems to be somehow hands in hands with the establishment, or at least he has been trying to be hands in hand with the military establishment of Pakistan, the powerful deep, deep state that does not allow anybody to have absolute power so perhaps that is one of the reason that the reason uh, that perhaps that is one of the reason uh, the PMLA is yet to pick up to this statement and respond formally yes I sure interesting uh, point there uh, Reham uh, I want to ask you uh, you know the the impact on the uh, election seems quite uh, apparent to uh, you know maybe an audience sitting in India but do you feel that uh, Justice Siddiqui's statement specifically about the bail plea uh, of Nawaz Sharif and uh, Maryam Nawaz has perhaps come too close to the polls and that is perhaps why people are keeping quiet right now? I think uh, on um, uh, conversely actually I think that people are did not really expect this sort of a lot of people like myself have been viewing this very closely for a few months in fact uh, have uh, th these were predictions uh, made by some very junior uh, entrants into media and they were shocking and nobody wants to believe these things I think we were in a state of denial that they could uh, that the military could interfere or the ISI could be interfering or the judiciary could uh, afford to malign 
an institution which is of course uh, viewed with esteem or at least uh, is considered uh, you know has a position of preference in society and we don't want to believe these things but so close to the elections and we've seen the blatant fascism the blatant um, it's time and time again I mean we've said it on air and we've written about it that there is no level playing field it's been called the dirtiest elections so far in Pakistan's history and these were the headlines of some leading uh, foreign newspapers and even they are coming out with these stories now and I was wondering why there was a blackout about the media um, the, the, the curb on media freedom and it's it's perhaps very late for, uh, for, for for us to correct it but I think it's probably because people are feeling very frustrated they didn't expect them to go so far this far and and some of the, the, the news that's coming out of Adiala a jail as well is quite disturbing. It seems like, yes, it seems like a very personal vendetta. Uh, I just spoke to a member of the family, extended family, and they were telling me how um, the conditions in Adiala are not something that is very typical of political prisoners. Mm -hmm. uh, they are uh -huh. not left alone to have any meetings with the family. Uh, they were telling me about insects and, and, and they were telling me about how uh, food is not being delivered on time to them. And this seems to be um, sort of um, tactics to further pressurize them or, or, or to sort of take a personal vendetta out. And, and this is quite disturbing. Also, I mean, one of the good stories, I suppose, in the silver lining is the fact that people like Justice Siddiqui are coming out with it. And uh, also one of the silver linings is the fact that we have a very vibrant social media and so via social media, we have some very sensible voices coming forward. One of the more disturbing things recently that we've seen is Gibran Nasir in Karachi, who's an independent candidate, and he is not one of the Sharifs, he's not one of the political parties. Right. And the way he has been openly attacked by uh, extremists and no one has stood up for him and he has not been afforded any security or protocol has a lot to say about what sort of figures they want in parliament. As as Anas pointed out, they want a hung parliament, they want, some, they want people who would not comment about foreign policy, foreign policy would remain untouched. Basically a parliament that has no authority and that's what they want. And uh, it's, it's a very bleak atmosphere, but people are reacting to it. And I think a lot of sensible voices coming out from Pakistan. And, and certainly after my book as well, I'm looking at a lot of emails and a lot of voices where I think people are picking up courage from each other. Right. It is. Uh, it does seem like that. And, and as you mentioned, I mean, the story is uh, being picked up and talked about a lot online. Uh, stay with me, Reham. Uh, before we move on to the Sharifs, uh, Anas, one quick question to you on the statement that Justice Siddiqui made about the judiciary being responsible for uh, the current situation, at least 50 percent. What do you think he was referring to and how exactly should we read this in context of what he said earlier? Well, uh, it's not just that he said that the 50, uh, judiciary is responsible for 50% of the mess. He also went on to say that uh, the accountability court judges were to report to the IS officials in the evening. So clearly he has been pointing out that uh, the judiciary, the, the ongoing mess in Pakistan is because of the judiciary, so because they had succumbed to the pressure and they had bowed, to, they had bowed down to the IS officials, to the, to the powerful deep state in Pakistan. Now, uh, because one thing that has to be kept in mind, because uh, when the Nawashri government was in power. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the economic condition of Pakistan was not as worsened up as it is right now. Uh, the electric electricity situation within the domestic si situation in the in the in the country was not as worsened as it is right now. So uh, clearly, he has uh, the, the what uh, to what he was pointing. He was uh, pointing at the current situation of the country in contrast to the uh, to the Nawashri tenure, to the Sharif tenure, to the permanent tenure, and that uh, since the judiciary had bowed down to the powerful deep state and become a party to the ongoing mess and uh, the, reason, the, the reason Pakistan has been pushed back into time. Yes, Aisha. Okay, stay with me, uh, both of you. I want to take our viewers through uh, an update on uh, the Sharif family as well, specifically on uh, Maryam Nawaz, the daughter of the former Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. She will not be moved out of the Adiala jail to the rest house in Islamabad, at least for now. This after she told the authorities that she would rather stay with her father and her husband, who are currently lodged in the Rawalpindi jail. The authorities wanted to relocate uh, Maryam Nawaz because uh, the current uh, jail that she is incarcerated in doesn't have facilities for women prisoners. 
Now, on July the 6th, the Sharifs were convicted in the Avonfield case by the National Accountability Court in Pakistan. Mr. Sharif was given 10 years in jail while his daughter was awarded 8 years in prison. They both uh, returned from London last week to a court arrest. In fact, on Tuesday, the Islamabad High Court had postponed their bail plea. Meanwhile, the president of the uh, Pakistan Muslim League, Nawaz, and the brother of Nawaz Sharif, that's Shehbaz Sharif, has denounced the proceedings of the National Accountability Bureau, claiming that the trial has been conducted to push his party to a corner just before the elections. He has alleged that the PMLN candidates are still being pressurized into joining other political parties. Riyam, uh, to you first, uh, Mariam Nawaz's decision to uh, not be moved out of the Adiala jail, despite, of course, uh, the many issues of uh, her being lodged there. How should we uh, be looking at that uh, decision? Uh, she has emerged as, uh, really speaking, a very powerful uh, female voice so far, and I suppose this only adds to her uh, presentation as somebody who's willing to take, uh, let's say, just uh, take the punches on her chin as she goes forward. I would even take it further and I, I think that she's winning a lot of fans and, and people who are not necessarily PMLN voters but a lot of feminists of course recognize that she's a very strong woman but I think it goes beyond gender. You have to recognize that she has emerged as a political leader and I say leader because she has exhibited courage that is unmatched uh, not only in recent times uh, but also in all of our history. She is perhaps the only politician in Pakistan who has emerged or her inception has been uh, because of becoming anti-establishment. Her own father cannot claim that. Her uncle cannot claim that. Certainly Imran can't claim that. N neither of the, you know, uh, any of our prime ministers or, or presidents or whoever been lucky to go to this prized uh, office uh, of a prime ministerial, uh, this this role have can claim that, and she has emerged as anti-establishment, as someone who is defiant, and and I think that goes beyond her gender. It's not gender specific, but of course she's being uh, she's being admired for that courage. Of course, courage is is uh, perhaps the uh, fundamental um, uh, quality that a leader needs, and of course in these days and times where everyone, it seems, uh, is behaving like a puppet or wants to be a puppet. The best puppet will be picked. And and uh, once a puppet is picked, then a puppet is going to uh, behave exactly wherever the strings are being pulled. So I think the need of the, the times is uh, that we need someone who's very strong, as Anas pointed out, that foreign policy is, is the main issue, actually. Someone who can take a very strong stance on Afghan policy, someone who can take uh, strong decisions when it comes to the foreign office, that needs to be given to the parliament. That needs to be given to democratic and political forces. That needs to be, it, there needs to be a clear de demarcation. And, and also the fact that we are going through an extremely difficult period uh, with our economy and we need someone who can actually spearhead uh, us out of this. The fact that Mariam is in, in, in prison and is not allowed to contest, uh, she's been disqualified, uh, leaves us with very limited options. Of course, uh, Bilal Bhutto, the other um, new entrant in, into our uh, political landscape has been winning a lot of favor in the last couple of days actually. He's done some, something very miraculous. All the damage that was done uh, by his father in Punjab, he seems like this young lad is actually making a lot of progress in a very short time. Maybe it's too late for these elections, but he's certainly earning a lot of respect even for those who are not Pakistan People's Party supporters. Right. And in fact, people from the PMLN are also admiring him. So I've had a lot of conversations this morning from people who are saying that we are PMLN and we, we are from the family, but this this young man is is uh, making all the right noises. Okay, so baby steps perhaps for Bilawal uh, Bhutto Zardari as we go ahead. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, maybe it's a bit too late for this uh, round of polls, but perhaps next time. Um, but staying with the, the question of Mariam Nawaz, uh, Anas, this one's for you. Um, there are suggestions also, of course, that uh, she is direct competition for Nawaz Sharif's brother, Shehbaz Sharif, who sees his own son Hamza as uh, you know the, the heir apparent if you will of the PMLN so perhaps uh, her rise to power and rise in popularity comes as a bit of a thorn in the side for uh, p members of the family itself. 
absolutely it does come as a matter of great concern for Hamza Shahbaz and the Sh- and the Sharif family the for the, uh, the family of the uncle of uh, Maryam Nawaz because this move of uh, Maryam Nawaz to not to uh, go to Sahara rest house to not to go to that comfort zone where it's it's ideal for prisoners to offer that comfort zone and instead she chose to be in that same barrack well, mind you what you have to keep in mind that Adiala jail in Rawalpindi it does not have special class barracks for women so she is in those ordinary barracks with with the other women prisoners that is very very significant primarily because uh, the, we we've seen complaints from uh, by the jail administration that there have been lots of mosquitoes there are chances of malaria uh, to the to the inmates that are, that are uh, relatively high so maryam nawaz in all of this uh, in all of this scenario opting to stay with her father opting to stay with all of those common prisoners not just that what also has to be kept in mind as rehan rightly pointed out she had taken up the fight with the establishment and the 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 powerful deep uh, deep state of pakistan they would never want the foreign policy and the defense budget in addition to what rehan said the, they wouldn't want the defense budget to be curtailed uh, nawaz sharif and maryam nawaz maryam nawaz we, we had been seen she had been working on a lot of educational projects in fact just uh, just two days back we saw the news that she has opted uh, to teach in the in the jail to the jail uh, to the prisoners uh, to the women prisoners and their kids while uh, uh, during the time period of 8 years as she is she is there for in jail she'll be teaching the kids so it's it's a very significant move and that will be a matter of great concern because it will end up it's not just b- of public sympathy but it will end up gaining public popularity among among the masses this move of maryam nawaz and that will be very very some for the sharif family particularly for hamza shahbaz and shahbaz sharif yes aisha indeed uh, so uh, this uh, rise in popularity of course not a new phenomenon but one that is gaining strength we leave it at that um, both reham and anas thank you both for taking out the time to speak with us uh, on the broadcast we will of course continue to track that particular story about uh, the allegations made by justice siddiqui